everybody everybody all of you in this room have access to one superpower i'll give you examples of people who have that superpower gandhi ji winston churchill narendra modi barack obama donald trump whether good or bad different debate but all of them have that superpower what is it no it's not leadership it's not public speaking it's a superpower called articulation 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 is the sum of two components the power to have something that people want to hear and the ability to communicate that effectively these two things together gives you one superpower called articulation i have always been hunting for the superpower for a long time i've tried to make myself as articulate as possible the second part of articulation learning how to communicate effectively that's what the stage is for and every single time you come on the stage you're going to get better and better and better at that part the first part how do you develop something that people want to hear you especially today do you realize that if anyone wants to understand a concept all they ever have to do is google or chat gpt how do you stand out with content today how do you be articulate today one of the ways you can be articulate is by maintaining a journal this is the why this is the whole reason why i thought i would share this with you today i would love to make you people more articulate than anyone in this entire world can possibly be and here's the best part i've seen some of you speak there are four kinds of perspectives you can always have in life you'll always have four you will have known knowns you are all here in this room at national college bandra this is a known known you are aware this is something you know you don't have to research on it. you have something called known unknowns right you know that you cannot come here and build a nuclear fusion reactor right now. so if someone asks you you can say i don't know this you are aware you don't know this so far so good there is something called unknown unknowns as a source of a lot of fear and probably the reason behind a lot of united states military tactics they don't know where the next attack can come from so they preparing for it. journaling introduces the fourth aspect which no one has ever spoken about and deconstruction especially will help you with that fourth aspect unknown knowns things in life which you yourself are not aware you are you know or have been linked to something that's happened to you in the past and my job here today is to try and give you examples of this and try and teach you how you can get this as a part of your daily routine this is the why part of my speech i always like starting with why anyone simon sinek fans right always start with why why are you guys here to read about journaling this is why to become articulate and understand your known unknowns good to go all right what do we do with when we come to journaling there's a lot of journaling techniques out there i have tried a lot of them the first one which i recommend morning pages it's very simple take a blank notebook in the morning no filters take a cup of tea take a cup of coffee whatever and write you can change a sentence midway my i'm not very happy no i'm actually very happy today i don't know why i just said that doesn't matter it's not about grammar it's not even about sending it to someone morning pages is just a simple brain download as early as you can in the morning and this is a technique i've tried it works bullet journals it's a simple 200 page notebook you can keep it will track your entire thing there's a simple 2 minute video on youtube i won't go into too much detail with that then comes the interesting part of journaling and a subset of that is deconstruction very recently i began taking notes on the basis of actionability right for example all of you are writing something as i'm saying today right you're all writing something right now what if you never open that book again and how many times has it happened to you that you've written down something but you just never open that book again how many times when you take notes on the basis of actionability that won't happen and i'll tell you how there are two acronyms i'm going to use and to be very clear these are not my acronyms this is a gentleman called tiago forte these two acronyms became a very central theme in how i take notes and how i start writing 
The two acronyms are P A R A and C O D E. I'll explain both of them in absolute detail, and this can be Googled, so don't worry about writing it down. There are four aspects of your life which are always important to you, right? Projects, areas, resources, archive. P A R A. Projects, re areas, resources, archive. Anytime you take a note, anytime, let's say you've taken a note. Nuclear fusion is done using helium atoms. For some reason, you've written that as a note. If you are working on a project involving nuclear fusion, it straight, straight away goes into that project. If you are vaguely interested in nuclear fusion, and someday you might like to research on it, it will go into resources. If you are working on it now, it's a part of your daily life, it will go into areas. And if you don't know what to do with it, it goes into archives. P-A-R-A -A is divided into the basis of time. If it's something that requires you're working on right now, it's a deliverable right now, it's a project. If it's something you're always going to work on for the rest of your life, it's an area. If it's something that may someday become an area, it's a resource. And if you don't know what to do with it, it goes into archives. Now here's the best part. I tested this on my office email. My office email, every email is grouped into a project, area, resource, or archive. You will not believe me, guys. I do not spend more than 30 minutes on email every day. Not more than 30 minutes. And Outlook has those rules, right? I put in rules, it goes into those projects, areas, resources automatically. And I refine it. If I don't need it to go there, I'll refine it later. But I don't spend more than 30 minutes on email every day. If you want to test this, test it on your emails first, and then try to do it into an actual thing. This was bad. What was CODE? CODE is how you capture notes. Now, this is going to sound very geeky and fine, I'm, I'm okay with sharing this. You need to make sure there is no obstruction with capturing notes. No obstruction. You won't always have a pen and paper, for example. So I've spent some money and bought a very high-end phone which has a stylus in it. Trust me, it looks really cheap when I take this out and start writing in front of people. I don't care, I just need to write. So I have a note phone with a stylus. I'm not telling you guys to buy one. I have a watch here where I can record voice notes. It automatically transcribes and directly syncs with my phone. Why am I telling you this? You never know when something important resonates with you. Never. And as soon as you remove those frictions, you will suddenly see that you are paying way more attention to the world and way more attention to what can possibly help you. And you'll suddenly find a lot of notes. The moment I started doing this, my desktop got cluttered massively. I had so many notes, so many notes, so many notes. It was maddening, but it was exhilarating because I had so much to do suddenly. Which comes to the second part. Organize. Organize into that pattern. Organize those notes that you capture into pattern. Try to automate it as much as you can. Try to do it manually as much as you can. But as a thumb rule, don't do it immediately. Never organize the moment you capture. Organize after two days. Because most of the time what you captured, it may have resonated with you then, it won't resonate with you later. Give it two days, at minimum give it two days. I give it a month. I organize all my notes once a month. Then comes to distill. Now this is the most important part of note taking, what I said about actionability. And where journaling comes in very handy and where deconstruction comes in handy. And I'm going to speak about deconstruction shortly. Distill is whatever you have captured and organized. Can you distill it into four or five key takeaways so that you don't need to read the entire thing again? Just four or five important takeaways. And here, some fun artificial intelligence can help you. If you read an article and you want it summarized, just put that article in chat GPT and say, write a four word summary for me. Fine, do that, no issues. Try to distill everything you can into four or five important takeaways. The last one, which you guys can probably do very easily, express. Express, how? Come here and give a speech about it. Come here and give a speech about it. When you are expressing, how many of you have heard people say this? The greatest way to learn is to teach. Why? Because as soon as you express something, you have understood it way better than anyone else ever can. Because you are now taking on that responsibility of teaching someone. As soon as you have expressed an idea, you will never forget it. Trust me on this. She gave an introduction that I have apparently read all these books and Einstein and all that. Trust me, if I take an IQ test today with all of you guys, 90% of you would have a higher IQ than me. And I'm not ashamed of saying that. 90% of you would probably have a higher IQ than me. The only difference is I've been doing this. Every single idea that I've read, I've captured into this idea which I call the second brain 
which Tiago Forte also calls the second brain. And then I developed my own technique called deconstruction. So far so good? Too much information? Everyone okay? Everyone okay? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Let's move to deconstruction. Yes, let's take a break. If there's no chairs, just take a plastic chair behind you. Okay. Now deconstruction. Again, let me start with the why. Why did this? Why do I use this technique? A lot. When I was growing up, I used to be perennially angry at the world. You know, why can't we just print more money? Why can't we save the environment? Let's just get rid of all cars. Let's do this, let's do that. It was like a very easy anger. How many of us have done this? Easy anger, right? Then I decided to take one step back and say, look, maybe it's possible that the world is not evil. Maybe. If the world is not evil, why haven't we done that yet? Why haven't we just printed money willy-nilly? Then I understood about concepts like inflation. Then I understood concepts like the subsidies are more for poor people than for rich people. So whatever subsidies are right now being given, it's the poor who are enjoying it. We take them away, those are the first casualties in this climate war. So we go for a different way to save the world, nuclear fusion. These kind of ideas are not easy. These kind of ideas require thought. And the only way to develop critical thinking, according to well-published studies, is to write. When you write, you develop critical thinking. But that is again a very easy idea. I decided to take it one step forward and I decided to try something which I'm calling deconstruction. What is deconstruction? Simple sentence, honesty is the best policy. How do I deconstruct this? I take the word honesty and I say, what is the textbook definition of honesty? What is my definition of honesty? What are some examples of when I have been honest and I have not been honest? Why? Same way, I'll break up the entire sentence. Policy. Why is the word policy being used? What is, what is the word textbook definition of policy? What is my definition of policy? And why is this sentence complete with this particular word? You deconstruct. Imagine a building. When you are doing any renovations in your own house, right? what ends up happening? You are instructed one thing. Don't touch the support beams. right? I want to break down every concept to its support beams. What are the support beams holding up this concept? Then let's add back the fat and see if it's needed. This was a simple deconstruction. But here is where I actually use it. First one, whenever you have an emotional response. Whenever you have an emotional response, try the deconstruction method as follows. When was the last time you had this emotional response? What were the events leading up to it? What were the events leading up to this current emotional response? Are they similar? Are they not similar? Next, there is one simple three word rule I like to live by. Respond, don't react. How should I have responded in that situation? And how did I react to that situation? What is the difference between the two? Why is it? This is a very comprehensive exercise. And it's not easy to do. You have to approach deconstruction as if no one is going to read what you've written. That's the fundamental rule. You have to approach deconstruction as if no one is going to read what you've written. The reason is you have to be 100% honest and vulnerable in your deconstructions. You should be offended, like literally violated if you find out someone's read what you've written. That means you've done it correctly. Which obviously means, please make sure you keep your journals private and all that, but fine. When you do that, you will suddenly find an internal warning system automatically triggering whenever you're faced with those situations again. That look, this has happened, I've written about it, this is what I would have done in the past, let's change that, let me move in this direction instead. How many people agree with this particular idea? Psychiatrists have published articles about it. An entire book on logotherapy was written by, by Viktor Frankl on this particular method. Deconstruction, deconstructing your emotional responses is one of the best ways to use deconstruction. How do you do it? What were the events that led up to it the last time? What were the events that led up to it now? How did I react last time? How did I react this time? How should I have responded? Always, respond, don't react. How can you make sure you respond is one of the best ways to use deconstruction. 
Second one. <coughs> goals, basically. All of us have a vision of who we want to be 10 years from now, 5 years from now. More or less, it's something like this. Look, I want to be financially okay. I may maybe want to have a house, maybe a family, kids. Maybe I want to have travel the world. Maybe I want to do this. More or less, around these, everyone's 10-year goals are centered. Some of you may go even further. You may want to be CEOs. Some of you may not want a family, you want to do this instead. It's fine. Can you deconstruct that? Can you write that goal as clearly as possible and understand that this goal is probably going to change and that's fine. But can you write it down the first draft and break down each word? I want to be CEO. What does CEO mean? What does it mean? Is, does it mean that I just want to be, have the position and the power? Is that it? Or do I want to lead the company into something? Do I want to be responsible for growth? Why? Just because to see if I could do it? That's fine. That's a good answer. Right? You, you, the point of deconstruction is not to be judgmental. If you, if you are someone who needs that kind of gratification, that's fine. But at least now you know it. At least now you know that, yes, look, this is what motivates me. Absolutely fine. Maybe you just want the money. Maybe you want to be in a money environment. Maybe you want to be in a money environment and hence you are trying to be a CEO. That's also absolutely fine. But deconstruct it. How much money do I need? What's the cutoff for that money? By what age do I need that money? Deconstruct the idea. Make sense? Emotional response? Goals. There is one dangerous aspect of deconstruction. And I would encourage you, strongly encourage you, to not try this until you have journaled for some time and used deconstruction for some time. But I would strongly urge you to do this. How many of you all are aware that I have a lot of unpopular opinions? <laughs> <laughs> there are concepts in this world which are very easy to have an opinion on. Very easy. The media will tell you what opinion you should have. Right? The <coughs> entire idea of media-driven opinions, family-driven opinions, friends-driven opinions, means that you have very often not explored your stance on a particular topic. Don't ignore that. Don't. The entire point of a stance, developing a stance without thinking, will often get you in trouble. Often. Because the moment you speak to someone who's actually thought about it, the natural response is anger, outrage. Right? How can you have that opinion? That's the normal response. How do you avoid this? Take unpopular opinions. Take topics like LGBTQ. Take topics like abortion. Take topics which are extremely sensitive in nature, deconstruct it, honestly, honestly deconstruct it. If you are not someone who is very pro-LGBTQ -LGBT, people, it's fine, deconstruct it. Understand why you think that way. Has someone told you to think that way? Develop an argument and as you develop that argument, genuinely open yourself up to questioning that argument. Right? I'm not going to tell you if you're right or wrong on this stage. But I would encourage you to take these unpopular opinions that you have, every single one of them, and deconstruct them. I'll give you an example of when to know you have that opinion. Easy way. Every time you take offense. Think about it. Every single time you have taken offense, at least for the next 30 days, don't react. Respond by noting it down. That look, I just took offense, this person said this. And go home and deconstruct. I challenge you in 30 days, on the 31st day, you'll have random people coming up to you and saying, you've changed a little bit, what happened? Why? The biggest lie anyone ever tells you about you is that you know yourself the best. It's the biggest lie in the world. They'll tell you that you know yourself the best. We know ourselves the worst. We know ourselves the worst. If we knew ourselves, we would know exactly what we want in life. We know ourselves the absolute worst. The only way to get over that is by deconstructing ourselves. Find out the basic support pillars that make you who you are. And then add back the fat if needed. But what are those basic support pillars that make you who you are? Here are mine, since I have actually deconstructed. I'm always going to be honest. 
I know people in this room who've asked me for feedback and I've been honest. So you can vouch for this. I will be honest. I don't care if you stop being friends. <coughs> but I will be honest with no matter what the situation is. I will always be patient. I will not lose my temper unnecessarily. I know, I'm sorry. But I will try my best to not lose my temper unnecessarily. I had to say sorry to my ex wife <laughs> You will find virtues which mean a lot more to you than other people as you deconstruct yourself. And engaging in this practice is something I hope you do regularly. Keeping charge of time, let me quickly summarize. Why do we journal? I would love for people to be more articulate. How do you be articulate? Develop content and learn how to communicate that content effectively. Learning how to communicate that content effectively, postmaster stage will help you. Developing that content, maintaining a journal and reading extensively will help you. How do you journal? There's morning pages, there's bullet journal, there's regular journaling. Go for it. Try to journal on the basis of actionability. How do you journal on actionability? You use the PARA -A para method. Projects, areas, resources, archive. So anything that you capture as notes, organize it into para. Try to distill it using deconstruction and express it as often as you can. Deconstruction can be used for multiple levels. It can be used for simple stuff like honesty is the best policy. Deconstruction can be used for emotional responses to situations. Deconstructions can be used for goal setting. And deconstruction can be used for developing a stance on unpopular opinions of today. Make sense? I think that's my time.